Moose, how are you this morning? I'm good, Dan. How are you doing? Great. Your your favorite piece of sports memorabilia you have? Oh, wow. I got a 500 home run bat. Uh, Mickey Mantle had donated uh, an auction item to us uh, prior to him getting uh, cancer, and then he was not going to be able to make the event as he went through treatment. So he gave us his own 500 uh, autographed home run bat at the time, and it sat there at the auction, so I bought it myself. So. Any, any cowboy memorabilia that you kept while playing? Oh, yeah. I've got, uh, I've got a really nice picture of uh, Troy and Emmett and I in the backfield on a play uh, that they've signed. Um, Emmett gave me a, a fantastic painting by Vernon Wells for Christmas one year uh, that sits in my office. Um, so, uh, But other than that, you know, we, we've got some of the, the Super Bowl pictures, but I haven't got them signed. But there's, there's a lot of stuff that's, uh, that means stuff personal to me. Uh, but if you were to, if some, if a, a collector was to look at it, uh, you know, there's not the signatures on it to bring it value. But for me, it means a lot. How surprised were you that uh, that Giants Saints game ended up being low scoring? Well, I, I knew it wasn't going to match the 52-49 uh, that we had the year before. We actually did that game, um, so I knew it wasn't going to be that. The Giants defense uh, was was so much improved from last year. Uh, I, I was concerned about the secondary of the Saints. I didn't expect a close game. I thought it was going to be a, a 10 or a 14 point giant victory. So the way the game came out at the end, at just 16, 13, uh, to me, not only uh, the low scoring, but uh, as close as it was, I thought New Orleans defense did a, a very nice job yesterday um, against uh, what I consider is probably going to be one of the better offenses in the league as we get uh, into November and December for the giants. Did you watch the Rams yesterday at all? Did you get a chance to watch anything? You know, I didn't, Dan. I didn't get to see that game mm. at all. It's amazing that Seattle with Russell Wilson and their defense, and there they are trying to beat the Rams at home, and they score three points. I, I know we normally overreact with the NFL, but after two – when can you overreact, or when can you just react in the NFL and say, okay, now we got an issue here? This is two weeks. Is that enough? I think uh, – interesting stuff this week. The biggest – improvement or when you start to define yourself is week two because it's such an unknown coming into the opener because nobody really shows anything in preseason you don't really know who everybody is yet but but week two you kind of have a better idea of the week one performance and you start to game plan towards that so i think you can start to formulate your opinion in week two and then i think if you continue to play that way if it's if it does become consistent in your performance that uh, as we get to the latter part of that first quarter uh, you may have some issues with that franchise. And I think what's interesting in Seattle is is we see a lot of teams around the NFL kind of following the model that Dallas did. Dallas went heavy on draft picks in their offensive line uh, over the last five, six years. They've really concentrated on upgrading the offensive line. And we've seen other teams do that now. Um, you know, even talking to Ben McAdoo, you know, who I would consider, you know, an offensive-minded head coach, quarterback mm -hmm. coach, uh, working with Mike McCarthy. Uh, but, but his background is, is into the offensive and defensive line. For some reason, Seattle uses that as kind of their flex piece under their salary cap. They've got their key guys that they want to have, uh, Russell Wilson, Bobby Wagner, Earl Thomas, Cam Chancellor. Um, you know, they, they've got those guys, uh, you know, that they consider to be the core of that group, uh, Richard Sherman. Um, and then they're adding pieces around. But when you do that, you know, they don't, <laughs> they don't have that left tackle anymore. They let Russell Okun go in free agency. So their offensive line becomes that bargaining chip, and, and I think it's coming back to bite them. It's, you can only ask Tom Cable to do so much year after year trying to convert a defensive tackle to a guard or, or trying to make a, a guard a tackle or a tackle a guard. So uh, we're going to have to wait and see how this experiment works this year. But I, w I had some concerns about Seattle. Uh, because of the change in their offensive line this year from one that was suspect last year. I think they're relying on Russell Wilson too much to avoid the pressure. He's Daryl Moose Johnston, the NFL and Fox joining us, Dan Patrick Show. Jimmy Garoppolo, we're not sure if he's going to miss one to two or maybe more after injuring his shoulder. And now you bring in a kid that was drafted ahead of Dak Prescott. You know, they, they drafted him in the uh, third round, but... Is this more about just Belichick is going to insulate the court, whoever the quarterback is? It doesn't matter with that offense that he has. I think it's amazing what Bill Belichick and his staff are able to do. Um, you know, one of the reasons I think that that Tom Brady has to be considered the best quarterback to play in the NFL is, is he's never had that 
that group of guys around him for a consistent period of time. Um, you know, you, when you go and look at what New England has done through the years and the success that they've had, um, you know, they've done it with a strong running game playing defense. They've done it with two tight ends. They've done it with Edelman in the slot and Moss on the outside. Uh, the one fixture has always been Tom. So I've always been impressed with that. So this is just another, this is just another example of, or a challenge for Bill Belichick and his staff. But I think they've been so good at what they've done in the past that this will be challenging for him. But if anybody's going to be able to navigate this over the next two weeks, it's, it's going to be Belichick and his staff. You need a backup quarterback. I mentioned Tim Tebow, who knows the system. He's in great shape, and maybe you could get him in there for one or two weeks. Is that too much, too much Tim Tebow to bring in to the Patriots? Of all the organizations, you can bring him in, and it doesn't become Tebow time like it would any place else. Well, he'd be a, he'd be a stopgap, and that, that would be something um, you know right along the lines that, that Bill Belichick and his staff would, would probably consider and, and be able to make workable. Uh, it's funny in our game as we sat with Sean Payton on Saturday and we were kind of talking about different things and we got into Tommy Lee Lewis and you know how you know Sean will still call Bill Parcells and Bill will call Sean and you know Bill had worked with Tommy Lee down in Florida getting him ready for the draft but the name that came up was the quarterback at New England right now and you know Bill also said hey you got to take a look at the kid at NC State you know he's he's going to be a legitimate prospect next year in the draft and Sean looked at him, and he was very interested with him. And then uh, he went to the Patriots. So it was it was really strange yesterday that we heard this whole conversation about a guy who I was not really familiar with. And then later that afternoon during the course <laughs> of the game, he's thrust into the spotlight, and we've already got inside information on him from Sean Payton and from Bill Parcells. And then obviously, you know, Bill Belichick and his his group up there getting ready for the draft saw the same thing that these two had talked about that he has uh, the legitimate skills to be a prospect in the NFL. And I thought Brissett looked good when he came in there. And I, I don't know if it's the system. We get caught up in that, that it's Belichick's system, plug somebody in there. Garoppolo looked very good. Now we're going to find out when you when you put this kid in there to start against J.J. Watt and company, is it the system? Um, or, you know. <laughs> yeah, we're going to learn. We're going to learn a lot more. We're going to learn a lot more. Now, Jimmy Garoppolo played against – he played well against Arizona, which is a good defense. Yeah. Um, you know, Miami, Miami has, has the potential to be, but I, I still think they're in transition right now. Um, we're going to learn a lot more about exactly about that system and, and how that quarterback functions in that system against Houston. That's a, that's a pretty good front that he's going to see this weekend. But have you seen enough of a sample size with Garoppolo where, you know, he's got what after 2017, then he's done, uh, you know, would somebody jump in on, on Garoppolo or do we overrate because he's with the Patriots? No, no. I think uh, he becomes a very, uh, a very sought-after commodity. Uh, remember, we're really struggling to. Find, we've got 32 teams in the NFL. Um, you know, there's, there's definitely people that, that are concerned about the ability to get that quality backup behind uh, your starter. And, and does Jimmy Garoppolo now? Does, do teams look at him as a legitimate starter um, after his performance uh, in Week One and, and before he got hurt uh, against Miami? I, I think that he's always known all along with Tom Brady continually talking about how long he wants to play out into the future, that this is as much an audition for him for his next stop as it is to solidify his spot as the successor to Tom Brady uh, when his career comes to an end. So uh, I think it's going to be very interesting to see how New England navigates this whole thing because I think that Jimmy Garoppolo will be sought after when his contract expires and, and he's open to the free market. Um, there was a lot of talk about him coming out in the draft. Um, he has – had the opportunity to learn the system uh, from the best quarterback to, to play the game, in, in many people's opinion. Um, you saw how well he played uh, on the big stage uh, at Arizona that night. So I, I think he definitely has put himself in a position uh, for teams to, to make a run at him when his, uh, when his contract ends up. And it's going to be interesting to see what the response of the New England Patriots is. Good stuff, Moose. Thanks for joining us. Safe travels. You got it, Dan. Always a pleasure talking with you. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.